Hearing loss is not just something to worry about far in the future when you're older. In fact, the noise of everyday life is already putting your hearing at risk. How are hair dryers and headphones killing your ears? This is the University of the Netherlands. We depend on our ability to hear to connect us with the world around us. For example, when we wake up to the sound of our alarm clock, when we listen for traffic as we cross the road, and when we hear the sizzle of the pan cooking dinner. On a deeper level, we depend on our ability to hear to connect us with people around us. Both online and in person, hearing is essential for communication and a sense of belonging. Even mild hearing loss can impact our day-to-day -day lives and our relationships with others. And recent research shows that hearing loss is not just a problem with our ears, but it's also linked to other diseases, including increased risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and dementia. In this lecture, I'll explain how our hearing works and how the very noises around us can damage our hearing. Now, when we think about hearing loss, most of us think about either the very young or the very old. About one in 1,000 is born with a genetic disorder that causes hearing loss. We call this congenital hearing loss. And as we grow old, hearing loss is inevitable. Two out of three elderly adults have substantial hearing loss that interferes with daily life. We call this type of hearing loss age-related hearing loss. Now, there are options to restore hearing, like hearing aids and cochlear implants, but these options don't restore all aspects of hearing. And of course, people with hearing loss can still lead full and happy lives. But just like other diseases, preventing disease and developing better treatments improves quality of life. Now, what you may not know is that hearing loss doesn't just affect either the very young or the very old. In fact, new estimates indicate that after the age of 20, about one in five individuals already has some hearing loss. Now, these are alarming numbers. They indicate that hearing loss starts early and it affects a large number of people. And the biggest cause of this hearing loss in this age group is due to noise exposure. When you think about it, in our modern lives, noise is all around us. Traffic, music via speakers or headphones, and work in recreation environments can be common sources of loud noises. And although very loud noises have been long recognized to cause hearing loss, New work shows that even noise levels we once thought were safe can damage our ears. This damage builds up and cannot be undone. So it's important to recognize and protect ourselves from the noise around us. When we talk about sound or noise levels, we often use the decibel scale. The decibel scale is named after Alexander Graham Bell, who's famous for invention of the telephone. He also worked to improve education for deaf children. According to the decibel scale, the threshold at which we can just hear sound in a completely quiet environment is zero dB. A whisper is approximately 30 dB, and normal conversation is about 60 dB. At the opposite end of the spectrum, painfully loud sounds like firecrackers can exceed 140 dB. We also use this same decibel scale when measuring someone's hearing ability with an audiogram. The audiogram shows the threshold for hearing at standardized frequencies, we move from relatively deep tones on the left to higher pitch tones on the right. And here you see a normal audiogram from a healthy young adult. Notice that the threshold of hearing is close to zero across frequencies. So what's the connection between noise and hearing loss? Well, the first insights came from links between hearing loss and certain occupations. These links were first documented in the 1800s, but were recognized much earlier. And among those especially at risk were metal workers. One classic example of hearing loss is linked to metal working is called boilermaker's disease. Boilermakers are workers who spend their days pounding sheet metal into boilers. You could imagine this is in a noisy environment. And these workers would often develop what became known as boilermaker's notch or dip in the audiogram. That is, boilermakers were losing their hearing and they were losing their hearing in the frequency ranges where they were most exposed to damaging noise as part of their jobs. Now, with the Industrial Revolution, more and more people began working in noisy factories. Metal workers were not alone in developing what we call noise-induced hearing loss. 
Just like there was Boilermaker's disease, there was also weaver's deafness affecting those working in noisy textile mills, for example. Now, these early studies also showed that the length of time in these jobs was linked to worse hearing loss. Someone new to the job might have fairly good hearing, but someone who had worked 10 years in the same noisy factory was very likely to have hearing loss. So the total duration of noise exposure also matters. These early studies also pointed out that noise was not just bad for ears. Those with occupational noise damage said they had trouble hearing their loved ones, they couldn't follow the sermon at church, and in general, were less likely to engage in social events. Now today, guidelines are in place to minimize noise exposure in the workplace. So you might think that noise exposure is no longer a problem. Well, unfortunately, that's just not the case. In many places, these guidelines either aren't rigorously enforced or they aren't followed. And even if you don't make boilers for a living or work in a noisy factory, loud noises are still all around us. Let's think about the noise exposure in a typical person's day. Maybe you use a blow dryer after your shower. Well, those can operate at around 90 dB. Do you commute to school or work? Traffic noise and street construction can reach levels of 120 dB at their worst. And maybe you listen to your music on your commute? Most people set the volumes on their personal audio devices to somewhere between 75 and 105 dB, and usually it's on the high end. Did you watch a soccer game with some friends later in the day? Noise levels can reach upwards of 110 dB in a stadium or bar. Now these are all potentially unsafe noise levels, and my guess is you're not wearing hearing protection. So for most people today, non-occupational and recreational noises are the biggest culprits and even modest noise damage can build up over time. So why is noise so dangerous for our ears? Well, the early documenters of occupational hearing loss asked the same question, and they speculated that hearing loss resulted from what they called overstimulation of the auditory nerve. These researchers were uncannily correct, but to understand why, we have to look more closely at how the ear works. The ear consists of three parts, the outer, middle, and inner ear. Hearing begins in the outer ear, which is the part of the ear that we can see. It acts like a funnel to collect and focus sound energy into the ear canal and onto the eardrum. Movement of the eardrum then sets the bones of the middle ear, and these are the tiniest bones in the entire body, into movement. The last of these bones, called the stapes, presses against the opening to the cochlea. Now in Latin, cochlea means snail, and it perfectly describes this spiral-shaped structure of the inner ear. In humans, the cochlea is no bigger than the size of a thumbnail, and in humans, it's here that sound energy is converted to a signal that the brain can understand. We call this process transduction. The process of transduction relies on specialized sensory cells that are inside the cochlea. These cells are called hair cells because of the tufts of stereocilia, which look like tiny hairs projecting from their tops. The hair cells are meticulously arranged into one row of inner hair cells and three rows of outer hair cells, and they span the length of the cochlea. Hair cells on one end detect low frequency sounds, whereas hair cells on the other end detect higher frequencies of sound. Now, in total, the human ear has about 12,000 hair cells, which is actually not a lot when you consider their absolutely essential role in hearing. For example, the human eye has over 120 million or 10,000 times as many sensory cells. And because there are so few hair cells and they don't regenerate, it's important to protect them. So how do these hair cells detect sound? Well, when stapes hits against the opening of the cochlea, it creates a wave in the fluid filling the cochlea. This wave causes the tissue which holds those hair cells to move up and down, and it's this movement up and down that causes the hair bundles at the top of the hair cells to bend. Bending of these hair bundles in turn causes the hair cell to release a chemical signal that activates the auditory nerve. And the auditory nerve relays the signal through the brain to the auditory cortex for the perception of sound. Now, everyday sounds, communication is complex, and the ear and the brain work together to perceive sound. 
In this way, you can recognize the voice of your mother or the sound of jingling as your keys. And the vulnerability now of the inner ear stems from the amazing sensitivity of these structures. We can hear when it's very quiet, but also in very noisy backgrounds. The sound pressure of those quietest sounds, those are, are just at threshold, are able to bend those hair bundles by less than a nanometer. That's less than one billionth of a meter. Now by 60 decibels, and you might remember that was the sound level of normal conversation, sound pressure increases a million fold. So it's easy to appreciate that this mechanical energy in noise can physically damage the delicate structures of the inner ear. But physical injury is not the only source of damage. Other studies have shown that too much of the chemical signal that activates the auditory nerve can also overexcite and damage the nerve. So the early scientists who speculated that noise-induced hearing loss is caused by overstimulation of the auditory nerve were in many ways correct. And this damage can happen quickly, but can also build up with repeated exposure. Now, enormous insight into the link between noise-induced hearing loss and damage to the inner ear has come from experiments with humans and animals. These experiments clearly show that there is a link between hearing loss that we can visualize in the audiogram and the loss of the hair bundles, the hair cells, the auditory nerve, and even the tiny connections between the hair cells and the auditory nerve. Work in my group and other groups examines these structures to understand precisely how noise damages them and how this leads to hearing loss. We and others are also interested in identifying the other factors, genetic factors, environmental factors, that contribute to vulnerability. Many researchers are also investigating ways to protect the inner ear from noise. Some researchers, including those in my group, are investigating pharmacological strategies to prevent noise-induced hearing loss. On the other hand, other researchers are looking into ways to regenerate the structures of the inner ear once they've been damaged by noise. For instance, with growth factors or stem cells that can reverse uh, the damage done by noise. And many researchers are also interested in how hearing loss affects not just the ear, but also the brain and connects to other disorders. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do we need this research? Why not just avoid noise in the first place? Well, for one, many of us enjoy the noise of our modern societies. The hustle and bustle of urban life, listening to music, relaxing after work with friends in the pub. All of these are activities that can exceed what were once considered safe noise levels. And we also know that people are different and people differ in their susceptibility to noise damage and hearing loss. So there may not even be a single safe noise level that applies to everyone. And finally, and I think this is really interesting to think about, the ways in which noise damages the inner ear are similar to the ways in which other factors damage the ear. For example, there are some medicines like certain antibiotics and cancer-fighting drugs that can cause hearing loss. And sometimes there are simply no alternatives to these medicines. So insight into noise-induced hearing loss may help us develop ways to prevent hearing loss from these medicines. And altogether, this research gives us insight into ways to treat those other forms of hearing loss we talked about earlier, congenital hearing loss and age-related hearing loss, which also share similar features with noise-induced hearing loss. So circling back to the main question, are hair dryers and headphones killing your hearing? Probably not with limited noise exposure, but cumulative noise exposure is likely damaging your hearing. And unfortunately, at this point, damage to the ear cannot be undone. So prevention is really the best medicine. In fact, the best rule of thumb is to avoid noises that are too loud, too close, or last too long. And when that's not possible, ear protection is affordable and easy. Even inexpensive foam ear inserts can reduce sound levels considerably, taking you out of the danger zone. Just be sure you're inserting them correctly. Higher quality earplugs are available for musicians or those working in really noisy environments. And if you are exposed to loud noise, you may later have a feeling that your ears are full or that sounds are muffled. You may also hear ringing in your ears. Even if this clears up over the next few days, and in many cases it will, the chances are still high that some damage has been done. But as the boiler makers and factory workers in our previous story showed, damage accumulates. So just make sure to avoid noise better the next time. 
your ears will thank you.